Hello everybody, June here. I am back with another video and this one is a special one because this video is part of this so atop hashtag vlog with a V tour that um, has been going on in the vlogging sewing community. Uh, we have this group on Facebook and we talk about you know, how to improve our channels, how to make videos, uh, sewing related videos. And uh, a few months ago, actually probably close to about two months ago, we decided to do a blog tour, but instead of being on a blog with a B in writing, it would be a vlog with a V. So we all collectively decided that we were going to make a top, blouse, shirt, t-shirt, whatever, and vlog about it by August 31st and I'm cutting it very close but here is my video and here is my top. Now this top is a pattern from a magazine called Diana Moda which I bought in Spain last year. It's issue number 89. My issue is in Spanish but the Spanish ones are translations of the um, I believe German versions of the magazine that may have another name, but it's so complicated. But anyhow, this is uh, style number 4R in issue 89 of Diana Moda. And it is very quirky. And I think it's one of those styles that uh, you either, I wanna say love or you hate, but I'm, I'm a little lukewarm, so that may not be the most accurate description but is it has a very severe drop shoulder if i can get my hair out of the way here it has a very severe drop shoulder. the shoulder comes to here and then the sleeves are attached and it has a very low armhole my armhole is down here and that is designed to be that way what first drew me to this pattern was how I looked on the model. And although I have it out here completely so that you can see what it looks like, the model had it like sort of tucked into her jeans and it looked so great on her. And the model, um, the sample in the magazine is also made with embroider fabric like mine. And I really liked it and I wanted to give it a shot. I was also very taken by the neckline. Um, it is a V neckline, but it is very tall. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer here so you can see it. Right, so it's a very high neckline and ends in a V. And then the buttons here are also very peculiar. Uh, I don't know if you can see, I hope you can notice that they're not actually spaced the same. And that was not my mistake. That is part of the design. These three buttons are spaced pretty close. And then these ones are spaced um, a little bit further apart. And rather than having uh, vertical buttonholes, it has horizontal buttonholes, which I think is also kind of interesting. Now, that would normally be a problem for me in a more fitted shirt, but this one is very roomy, so that doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't cause any gaping because there's quite a bit of overlap on these two. And let me turn around and show you the back. If I can get my hair out of the way here. I don't know if I'm in focus. But the back of the neckline is uh, cut separate from the front. And it is really strange the way they have you put it together. But it, it all works out. And uh, this is... A size 42 44 so they come in sort of like small medium large but they bundle them in uh, 38 40 uh, 42 44 uh, 46 48 now I am I'm roughly between a 44 and a 46 in this particular size range but it is like I said very roomy so I felt like I did not need that much fabric so I made the smaller one and I think it's good for my bust. The only thing that I did uh, fit-wise was to take it in at the hip a little bit because I said before I have very small hips and so uh, it was a little bit tenty, tenty is a new word, around my hips. So I went ahead and took it in probably like a quarter inch on its side um, and that was that. Um, 
the inside is just so this is um like there's not a separate placket for the buttonholes it's just a facing that is cut onto the actual front of the shirt itself and then the sleeves are um the the, the cuffs i'm i'm a loss for words today the cuffs are cut separately and then sewn onto the shirt the shirt sleeves were very very long on the model they come to just about where they come here to me but i actually ended up cutting the the cuffs um in half lengthwise so my cuffs are only half as long as the ones in the magazine because they came down to my wrists and i didn't um when I was cutting it, I decided not to go ahead and reduce the size of the sleeves, so the length of the sleeves, because I wasn't sure how it was going to fit. And just because of the way they're shaped, I, di I didn't want to have problems sewing it on. So just cutting the cuffs in half was a much better option for me in this particular case. Plus it makes it look slightly daintier, I suppose. But, um, I really haven't decided how I feel about this blouse. The only thing that, that is really holding me back is that because the armhole is so low, when you lift your arm, you lift your entire shirt. And that is just the case with whatever shirt, blouse, t-shirt, whatever you have that is kind of bad wing, which I guess this is a little bit of, uh, so there's something to get used to. They are, however, long enough that even if I lift my arms, I mean, I guess you can see some skin, but not an awful lot. And like how often do you really lift your arms that way? So yes, here it is, is Diana Moda 89, style 4R in this uh, cotton poly shirt and blend that I bought from fabric.com last year. I hope you liked it. Really short video today, but I wanted in on the vlog tour. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.